DNS stands for Domain Name System. And its simple definition is it maps domain names to IP addresses. And by domain names, I mean, you know, like a website. For example, my website, networkverge.com. Um, and DNS will map that name to an IP address such as this one here. So computers and network devices will talk to each other with these IP addresses. And each device has a unique number like this. Um, but for us humans, that would be incredibly hard for us to remember um, every single website, every single device IP address. I mean, there's no way we could remember all of these numbers. So the, the DNS system was created to make it easy for for us humans to to browse the web and use our apps and and all of that. So D, the DNS um, it will have a DNS server, and that server is responsible for mapping these uh, user-friendly names to IP addresses. So for example, my, my computer here, if I wanted to go to uh, networkverge.com, it's going to uh, send that request to the DNS server, and the DNS server is going to uh, do all kinds of stuff in the background to find this IP address. And then it's going to tell my laptop, all right, networkverge.com maps to this IP address here. Now my computer then can talk directly to that server by the IP address. And this will go on and on and on. So for whatever website your laptop's going to go to, another example, google.com, the DNS server is going to map that to an IP address, and then it's going to tell your laptop or your device, here's the IP, and now your computer can talk to that uh, talk to that website. So over time, your uh, a DNS server and even your computer will build up what's called a DNS cache, which is basically just a you could, you could think of it as an address uh, like a phone book. It's going to have a a listing of domain names and a listing of IP addresses that go with those domain names. And again, your, your laptop could have this as well. So the benefit of this is once you have this cache, so you say, say you went to networkverge or google.com at one point, and then you try to go to it again, it's already going to be in this cache here. So your computer doesn't have to send out a request to the DNS server, and then your DNS server uh, do all of its stuff in the background to find these addresses. It'll, it'll help speed up uh, network communication. So that's a, that's a very simple overview of DNS. It just maps domain names to IP addresses, so it makes it very easy for um, humans, for us to uh, use the internet. Um, as, the, as network devices, they will use all of these crazy IP addresses in the background to talk from computer to computer, device to device. So that, that was a, just a high level simple overview. Um, the next, so now, now I'll get into a little more technical um, overview of how DNS works. DNS is, can be it's a very can be a very in-depth uh, discussion as there's a lot that goes on to it. It can be very simple. Again, it's just maps, domains, names, IP addresses. But when you get into the DNS server side of it, there's a lot going on and a lot to discuss. But I'll, I'll briefly go over some of the technical details of how it works. So, in the previous slides, I just showed you the local DNS server and just how it mapped uh, a domain name to an IP, but there's a lot that goes on. There's actually a hierarchy of DNS servers that sit out there on the internet that helps DNS to work. So you'll have, a, you'll have your local server, and what I mean my local server is, um, let me pull up uh, my, the IP settings on my local computer. So your local computer, it will be pointing to a DNS server. 
so whenever my computer makes a request to the internet or you know uh, uses an application or a game or watch a movie it's going to use this DNS server to resolve the the host names to IP addresses and and for your home network this is you know most likely your ISP but in uh, business networks corporations this could be uh, an on-premise DNS server that your administrators manage. It could be when you have Active Directory, uh, you'll have a local DNS server that you manage. So, what happens here is this is a, there are several steps involved. So, first step is you're going to make the the request, like we saw previously. It's going to go to your local DNS server. And I'm assuming there's no cache. Um, again, if, you're, there, if these requests are cache, it avoids all of this, but we're gonna assume there's no cache. So it comes to your local DNS server. It doesn't know the IP address for this, so it's gonna send it to what's called a uh, root DNS server. And these are root DNS servers that are um, strate strategically placed all across the globe. And again, this works in a hierarchy, so it's gonna, get your request and it's going to see that it's a .com and it's going to send it to the .com's top level DNS servers. So the root server is not going to know the IP address so it's going to send it back to your local DNS server with the IP addresses of a top level DNS server. So then your local server will send that request off to the top level DNS server. What the top level DNS server will do is it will find the IP addresses of the authoritative DNS servers for uh, your, your request. So it's going to send that back to your local DNS server and tell you, okay, here's the IP addresses of the authoritative DNS server for that request. So then your local server will send out a request to the authoritative DNS server, and that server should have the, uh, the IP address of your lookup. So that'll be another step that's going to send that back to your local DNS server. And then your local DNS server so your local DNS server will finally have the IP address and it can tell you tell your uh, laptop here is the IP and then your laptop will be able to talk directly to uh, the the IP address of the web server. So as you can see, it's there's a lot of steps that go on for DNS. Um, and, and honestly, as a network administrator, uh, a lot of this a lot of this stuff past the local DNS server is something you may never even deal with. Um, a, a lot of DNS problems will occur at the client or your local DNS server. Um, I've I've had instances where the ISP has had something cached wrong. And they've had to clear the cache or if it's a local DNS server that I manage um, again it could be a, a cache issue um, or just something was entered wrong um, but past that in you know, the root DNS servers top level DNS servers those are something you'll never deal with um, as, as a network administrator uh, the Thor DNS server might be something you control um, that that is if you're hosting your own websites and you manage the DNS and all that stuff um, so that that's a kind of a more in-depth process of how DNS server works or DNS works um, so, so now I'll go over a little more details I want to show you Wireshark uh, show you a DNS server so let me jump into that so I've, I've got my client up here and I showed this already but again your your local device you know it could be your phone it could be your laptop computer whatever it's going to be pointing to a, a DNS server and mine's pointing to dot nine dot nine dot nine dot nine um, yours may yours will be probably something different uh, it could be you know like a one nine two one six eight one dot one address but whatever it is it's pointing to a local DNS server and it's most likely your ISP, um, but in your in your corporate network, wherever you work, it may be a, a locally managed DNS server. 
Um, if you are in a, a network administrator, one helpful command is uh, NSLOOKUP. I won't go into depth, but uh, I'll have another video that goes into depth on how to use the NSLOOKUP. But this is a great command to test DNS and to troubleshoot issues. You can simply just type in NSLOOKUP and the domain name, and it will tell you the IP address. So you can see right here, it came back with this the IP address of 142. 250.176.206 and it showed me the DNS server it used to look that up and there, there com there's commands that you can use to change the DNS server um, to test to test to look up with a different domain that's helpful to do if you know to, ch to check for caching issues or if your local server is having some issues so I had mentioned that uh, a lot of this these steps can be skipped if your computer has um, a local cache. So I want to show that to you. So let's say my laptop's already been to networkverge.com, it's going to have that in a local cache. And that cache could be um, from your Windows operating system or whatever operating system you're running. It could be cached in the browser. Your local DNS server could have it cached. So let me show that to you. So on a Windows computer, you can do ipconfig slash display DNS. And it could have thousands of entries, but, and I stopped it from running, but you can see here, it's got a record name, here's the host name, and here's the IP address that that maps to. And there's just tons of entries. Because going to one website, and you know, here's a Twitter IP, or host name, it maps to that IP address. Uh, there'll be a, a lot of stuff you don't even recognize in here. Because going to, going to one website will generate, could be hundreds of different domain names. You know, here's something with Microsoft Azure, and it shows you a record type. Here's some other website, and it maps the IP address. So that's that's the local cache. So you know, if I went to uh, this, this website here, it's going to, let me give a different example, because those are, here we go. I'll go to, if I went to this website here, it's gonna look in my local DNS cache, have the IP address, <clears throat> and be able to direct my request right to that IP address without having to do a whole DNS lookup process. Okay, so now, now I wanna show you a DNS server. So this is something that would be on a business network where they have Active Directory or they manage their own local DNS. It doesn't go from the client directly to an ISP. It's gonna go from the client to um, a DNS server that's managed by your company. So this is a Windows Active Directory server uh, with DNS. So you can see here it's got, and it, this, can, this is a completely different topic as it's, you know, there's a lot to cover, to cover, but I kinda wanted to show you um, how this works. So if a computer on the local network, you know, has its what's called a, d a domain, you log into that computer and that computer will give you access to resources on, you know, the local corporate network. So if I wanted to access, you know, server one, it's going to hit my local DNS server and you can see um, how that's mapped out here. There's a host record for server one and here's the IP address. And you can see a bunch of other servers in here, PC1, PC2, uh, these DCs, um, how they're all got their host name and they map to an IP address. And then inside of local uh, companies, you know, they may have all kinds of domain names. This is Active Directory Pro.com, I would have Network Verge, you know, I could have um, a bunch of other domains, uh, and they're called DNS zones that would have their own individual mappings of IP addresses or, or domain names to IP addresses. So then what happens when that local server, you know, it goes to Google? Well, um, Google is not listed in here. So what, what's going to happen is this DNS server will then forward it on to uh, what's called forwarding servers. And that could be that could be your ISP or that could go directly to those root servers. And it's going to go through that process that I showed you earlier of going to the root servers, going to the top level servers, and then the authoritative server, and then sending that all back to the local DNS server and then back down to the client. So again, it's just this big hierarchy 
um, of requests that go from the top all the way down. So now, let me show you, I want to show you, uh, pull up Wireshark, do some DNS requests, and show you the actual network packets that are happening in the background. Okay, I've got Wireshark running. It's capturing network packets on the network, and you can see all the traffic that's happening here. So I will come up to the filters, and I want to see just DNS requests. So I'll just put in a DNS filter, hit enter, and I will go generate some DNS traffic. And there I did that NS lookup, and you can see, I'll stop that, uh, my computer IP made a DNS request to my DNS server um, for the google.com, and it sent that out, and here you can see the request, or the response back. So my laptop sent the request, and now I've got the response back, and it's giving me the 142.250.176.206. So there you can see how that that client to local DNS server works. You send out the request to the server, your server will respond and give you the uh, the IP address of that domain that you looked up. So pretty simple, um, but let me show you this process on the local DNS server, as you'll, you'll and you'll see. Um, a lot more going on okay so here I'm on a separate network and, and this will be similar to a, a, a network that's got Active Directory so my client computer here is pointing to 192.168.100.1 actually let me the DNS server is going to be .10 so this this computer is pointing to a local DNS server on my network. So I'll do a DNS lookup and you'll see uh, from this DNS server, you'll see how different it is from a client. Okay, so here's that DNS lookup from um, another client and you can see it's pointing to my local DNS server and it came back with that IP. Um, but if we look at the Wireshark, it's a lot different from uh, the client. So I send the request out. It's going to go to um, an authoritative server. It's not. It doesn't have it on my local DNS server. And one of the servers come back and says no such name. Uh, but it's going to forward that. You can see it's got different servers here that it's querying out on the internet. It that that one's probably my the next. <coughs> Next one on the hierarchy, maybe my ISP, uh, comes back, doesn't know it. Uh, this DNS server then forwards it on, says, I don't know it. And you can see two other DNS servers. And finally, this one here, actually it's this one here, comes back and has the IP address right there. So you can see how that's drastically different because that DNS server is going to go um, out to the internet and go off through that hierarchy of DNS servers to try to find the IP address for your request and then it's going to send it back your, DN your local DNS server will send that back to uh, the client so that that is DNS just just remember uh, DNS maps these domain names uh, to IP addresses uh, because it will make it it makes it easy for us humans to browse the internet and do what we do. Um, it's impossible for us to remember the billions of IP addresses sitting out there on the internet. Um, but that's how computers talk to each other. They talk to each other with all of these numbers and us humans need these easy to remember names so we can easily browse and stuff. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.